Hello and welcome to this video on the topic of moments, which is part of the Forces and Motion module for OCR A-Level Physics. So in today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at moments and how to calculate moments on different objects. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the conditions under which a force produces a turning effect, describe the support force on a pivoted body, and understand that the forces and moments on a body can be in equilibrium. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the OCR A-Level Physics Specification. 3.2.3 Equilibrium, in particular, Moment of Force, and the Principle of Moments. Now, linear forces are forces which make objects accelerate in straight lines. So this is acceleration by changing speeds. Now, rotational forces are forces which make objects accelerate in a circular path. So a rotational force or a system of rotational forces may cause an object to rotate. So this is acceleration by changing direction. Now, if we consider the following object, the object is fixed at point X. We can place a force downwards on the object. Now, remember to always draw the force of the weight from the center of mass of the object in free body diagrams. Now, we call the fixed point on an object the pivot or the fulcrum. Now, an example of this is the point where an object is screwed into a wall. So, in this example, point X is the fulcrum of the pivot. Now, whilst the force is acting vertically downwards on the object, the object will actually rotate due to this force. Now, this is due to the object being fixed in position at a point. So this causes the force to have a rotational effect on the object. So the resultant force is causing the object to accelerate by changing direction. So whilst the force is acting vertically downwards on the object, the object will actually rotate due to this force. Now the effect of a force causing rotation, or the turning effect, is known as the moment of the force. Now the moment of a force depends on two quantities. The magnitude of the force, now the bigger the force, the greater its moment, and the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot. The further the force acts with the pivot, the greater its moment. Now we can calculate the moment of a force with the following equation. Moment is equal to force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now the perpendicular distance is the distance of a parallel line between the force and the pivot. Or a better way to say it would be the distance of a parallel line between the line of action of a force and the pivot. Now it's always important that when you're calculating the moment of an ob on acting on an object to always use the perpendicular distance. Now the units of moments are newton meters because the units of force are newtons and the units of perpendicular distance are meters. So the unit of moment are a combination of the units of force and distance since the two values are multiplied. Now moments are vectors as they make objects rotate. So when calculating moments you must state the direction they cause rotation in. So the effect of a force causing an object to rotate is called a moment. The point at which an object rotates is called the pivot of the fulcrum. And we can calculate a moment uh, with the following equation. Moment is equal to force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now the force in this equation must be the vertical force acting on the object. If the force is acting at an angle, then the vertical component of the force must be found. The horizontal component of the force will not be acting in the direction of rotation, so will not contribute to anything towards the moment being produced. So we can calculate the moment of a force about any point, not just a pivot. However, in solving problems, it's often most convenient to take the moments about the pivot, as there's often an unknown force acting through the pivot, its contact force on the object. So we can use the idea of a moment to solve two sorts of problems. Firstly, we can check whether an object will remain balanced or start to rotate, or we can calculate an unknown force or distance if we know that an object is balanced. Now, to work out this information, it's important to clearly draw free, clearly labeled free body diagrams of the situation. So, as mentioned before, we can get objects which rotate about a pivot to balance. So, consider the following object which is balanced on this pivot. Now, what happens is multiple forces and moments will act on the body. Now, the physics behind getting an object to balance is called the principle of moments. So we know that these forces on the object will produce moments on either side of the pivot in this diagram. That's because the object is fixed at the pivot and the forces will cause a rotational motion. Now when an object balances, the moments on either side of the pivot must equal each other because that means the moments will cancel each other out. 
The rotation they produce are in opposite directions, so they will cancel through, which is why, why it's crucial to remember that moments are vectors. So mathematically, you would say one moment is a positive value and one moment is a negative value. This means overall there is no resultant moment. So when an object is balanced, we say it is in equilibrium. Now for an object to be truly in equilibrium, there must be no resultant moment or no resultant force. So this means that the moments on either side of the pivot sum to zero. And it also means the forces up and down on the object will also sum to zero. So for an object to be balanced, the moments and forces on either side are equal. So we can say the left hand rotational effect equals the right hand rotational effect, or the anti-clockwise moment equals the clockwise moment. Now we know that the moment is force times by distance, so in this example we can say force 1 times by distance 1 is equal to force 2 times by distance 2. So, to clarify, for an object to be in equilibrium, there must be no resultant moment or force on the object. So the sum of the moments clockwise about a pivot will equal the sum of the moments anti-clockwise about a pivot. So the force clockwise times by the distance clockwise is equal to the force anticlockwise times by the distance anticlockwise. So here we can see the principle of moments. That in this case, the anticlockwise moment equals the clockwise moment, or force 1 times by distance 1 equals force 2 times by distance 2 plus force 3 times by distance 3. This indicates to us that if there is more than one force acting on one side of the pivot, you work out the moment individually and then add them together to get the total moment on that side of the pivot. So here is an example of a moment calculation. Find the force causing the anti-clockwise moment in this situation. So we can say force 1 times by distance 1 equals force 2 times by distance 2. So it's force 1 times by 6 equals 10 times by 4. So force 1 is equal to 40 over 6, which is 6.7 newtons. So you write out your equation, you place your values into the equation, you work through the values and rearrange where needed, and give your answer to the same significant figures as the question with the correct unit. Here's another example of a moment calculation. Find the distance between the pivot and the force causing the anti-clockwise moment. So in this situation, we can say force 1 times by distance 1 equals force 2 times by distance 2. And then at that point, we can then say that distance 1 times by 15 equals 10 times by 3. So distance 1 equals 30 over 15. So distance 1 equals 2 metres. So once again, we'll place the values into the equation. We've worked through the values and rearranged where needed. And we've given our answer to the same number of significant figures in the question with the correct units. So to summarise in today's lesson, we've looked at the moment of force and the principle of moments. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the conditions under which a force produces a turning effect. We can describe the support force on a pivoted body, and we can understand the forces of moments on a body in equilibrium. So thank you for watching this video on moments, which is part of the forces and motion module for OCR A-level physics. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.